See something new? It is hard to get me to spend a dollar, but whenever I was scrolling through Instagram, I found this local company, 2A Customs. I, ha I checked out their product. It's, it's handmade, it's wood, it's heavy duty. They have all kinds of fish cutouts. They have redfish, trout, redfish tails, offshore fish. The LED lighting in it changes colors, so it, 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 it'll do whatever I want it to do back here. I couldn't be more excited to have it. Hope y'all think it looks cool. I, I sat in my room and admired it for 30 minutes yesterday. The price point is a good price point. My wife didn't want to kill me. I didn't feel like that my kid had to go without food for a couple of days for buying it. So 2A Customs, check them out, Instagram, Facebook. I didn't, I'm not saying this because I got it for free, because I didn't. I'm saying this because they're local, they're built well, they're really cool. If it fits your man cave, your office, whatever, give it a shot. Today's topic fits on multiple levels. It's, it's a great time of year to be red fishing. I just got done with the second stop of the Rubber Lips Roundup. If you don't know about the Rubber Lips Roundup, it's a two-day redfish tournament. I love it. It's run very well. Nathan and Josh do a good job. It's, it's very professional. The rules are where they should be. Um, it, it's just it's a good tournament. So I was already in the mood to talk about redfish and, and how to see them and the things we use to do what we did. And then lo and behold, in the in the in an email, I get this from a from a listener, viewer, whatever it may be. One tailing redfish. I'm not sure I know what a tailing redfish looks like. For those who come down once a year or every other year, this may be helpful. All right, let's do it. Two slicks. I hear about slicks and see them once in a while. Maybe show some cove where there are slicks. Slicks as I know them are trout throw up. All right. Three Scott Knoll, and I, he's talking about the Bite Me podcast. Scott Knoll talks about seeing mud clouds, and I can tell and can tell if they're a redfish or not. I wade fish and see them, but not sure what one made by a redfish looks like. Not sure if a trout makes one and what it looks like. Thanks for the questions. Makes my life easier. If I can just answer your stuff instead of coming up with, with what we're going to talk about this week, I love it. So that being said, that's what this channel is all about. It's about answering questions, clearing up some stuff. And so that being said, let's answer your questions. All right, so I'm gonna give you all five things that are absolute telltale signs there are redfish here. You, 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 we've covered the shad and all that stuff where, hey, you know, there, there might be some redfish close. This is five ways to know that there are redfish right here. One, let's start with boils right off the bat. Now, a redfish boil will tell you there are fish in the area. It doesn't always tell you they're eating. In fact, sometimes you can fish all day long and there's boils just absolutely everywhere. And it's one of two things. You're either, you're either pushing them with your kayak, boat, wade, or your lures are scaring them. So boils aren't always a great sign as far as I'm about to catch fish as much as they are there, there are fish here. So if I'm fishing you know, a, a moon pattern or a bite or weather or, or anything like that where I, I'm i having a hard time catching fish, I'm usually watching for boils just to give myself more confidence that there are fish in the area. Day one of the rubber lips, it, it the boils kind of bit me. We were fishing, you know, an area and we had a, we had a redfish that was about seven and a half pounds. I needed something to go with it. And I had sight casted a five pounder earlier in the day. So right now we're sitting a little bit over 13 pounds, which you know at this level isn't good. You want 15 to 16 plus for day one. And what got me was is I had seen two or three good boils in the in the area we were in, and that that made me stay and grind that. The more you see these boils and the the sizes and and the way that they're coming up, the more you can kind of get an idea of how big those fish were. So. I, I knew that there were good fish in the area. We grinded it out till almost the last minute we could fish and did end up catching a nine pound fish that ended up being a little bit over. The reason I say that it, it, it bit me is there were few fish in the area, so our, our odds of catching one quickly weren't as good. And then when we actually did catch it, it was, it was too long. Once, it, once that happened, we had to get back to weigh and we didn't have a choice. So looking back, hindsight 2020, I should, when those fish were being difficult, I should have moved to a different area that had more fish 
so that my you know my options were a little bit more open but a redfish boil and it's gonna matter whether you're on sand or mud if you're on sand you're just gonna see kind of a big cloudy spot in the water there's not gonna be a lot of definition to it um, obviously the bigger it is the you know the bigger the fish made it was because what's happening is that fish is kicking off with his tail while he's sitting down low and it is stirring up everything so to me a good a good solid redfish he's gonna make a boil and I, I know it's probably a little bit hard but let let's call it two feet three feet wide in the mud it looks a lot like the cloud from a nuclear bomb honestly it's gonna make a big one of these so if you see it and it is clearly defined you can see the edges of it all that kind of whatnot well then obviously the fish just made it now there's other times whenever I'm drifting across and it's a real just kind of a light dirty spot in the water and to be honest with you it takes a trained eye to start picking those out as they get older and older the a redfish bowl is usually one poof of mud that fish made one um, you'll see if you see like a mud poof mud poof mud poof mud poof in a line that's typically a flounder um, if they're they're little poofs then if the bottom's real soft then mullet can make those as well uh, the the question asked about trout. I haven't seen a lot of trout mud boils. That being said, I haven't looked for them real hard either. But a trout, I, th I think he's just a little bit more of a, a sleek fish, and he isn't going to stir up as much when he takes off as a redfish would, or you know, a flounder laying on bottom. His tail's doing that. So I don't think the the trout are as prone to making those boils. Now you'll see single boils you'll see doubles and triples so you know we can say there was one fish laying there there were two fish laying there sometimes you can see just a big wad of i've seen i've seen mud boils a quarter acre in size because that's the size of the school of the redfish so nine times out of ten if it's a big poop of mud and it's and it's especially if it's clearly defined that's going to be your, your redfish um when I see those, then I'll start looking for, for mud in the water, you know, mud streaks, stuff like that. Um, this weekend, I, I was sight casting fish during that tournament. I couldn't see the fish, but I could just see, you know, the, you could see the, the mud in the water. So the water, it wasn't green green. It was a little bit muddy, but there were slightly muddier spots in it. This mud, these boils, they can, they can really help you key in on where they're at or at least that there are fish there. I don't count on them to, to catch me fish though. All they are there for is giving me confidence that there are fish in the area. In fact, my son and I, we fish tournaments together and I got so annoyed one day with saying, there's a redfish bull, there's a redfish bull, and we were having a hard time catching them. Then we actually started calling them redfish farts just to you know give us something to giggle about. And believe me, whenever you say redfish fart to a seven year old, he'll lose it. But that's the, that's the gist of boils. Now, slicks, they happen with redfish, they happen with trout quite often. They happen with all sorts of fish. Typically what a slick is, is whenever the bait fish are getting smashed up, the oils of them are coming up. If um, you've ever thrown cut mullet or something like that, or put procure on a lure, when you throw it out, it's gonna make a slick. That's what it is, it's the oils from the bait fish coming up. Now, whenever a slick is new, it's going to come up about the little bit, maybe the size of a pizza or something. And then as it gets older and older, it's going to get bigger and bigger. If you come across a great big slick, then there, there's fish feeding in the area, but they're not, usually not right under it. It's the little small ones that, you know, you can key real close to that slick. Whenever they're bigger, then I'm going to move back further from them. I'm going to take into account wind direction and current direction. Um, you're just going to have to use your, your, your common sense out there and decide which way that slick is drifting. If the, if the current's coming this way and the wind's coming this way, then you're going to have to figure out what's moving the surface of that water more, the current or the wind. If it's a real light current but a strong wind, well, the wind's probably going to be able to move it. If it's a real heavy current, a light wind, then vice versa. So that's something that I can't really teach you you're just gonna have to, you know, put all the pieces of the puzzle together out there and, and figure it out. Now, we use slicks to catch redfish all the time, especially right now while they're shad. Um, slicks, they can be round, they can be long, you know, kind of, they, they call them hair slicks, they're kind of long, skinny ones. 
Now, if it's if it's real windy or something like that, and you see a long skinny slick, look out across the the lake or bay or whatever and see if there's more of them. If there's more of them, the wind can can make a slick too. You know, hence the term wind slicks. So. If, it, if it's a small one, I'm going to kind of get right behind it. If it's a bigger one, I'm going to start out further away from it and drift forward it should I elect to fish that slick. If you see slicks and there's a crab trap downwind or down current, it's most often the bait in that crab trap doing it. Now next is going to be wakes and pushes. Now a redfish wake or push, we're, we're going to call them pushes from here on out, they're usually a pretty defined V wake and they're quite often going in a pretty straight line. Uh, this one here that I'm showing you, he was moving right to left, but you can see that he's making a good wake and it's in a straight line. There's other times that you'll see wakes, but they're they're from mullet. A mullet wake is often smaller and it's kind of they they move in a kind of a squiggly pattern. They're a they're a bait fish. They 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 want to be harder to catch. Um, maybe they're confused. I don't know but the, the baits are gonna move around side to side, go in circles, do all kinds of crazy stuff where a redfish is usually gonna go straight. The shallower the water, the easier to see the push in the wake. If, it, if it's deeper water, then they're gonna have a much smaller wake, but it's still gonna go kind of in a straight line. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to find them, great way to see them. Whenever I see them, I usually pitch in front of them and, and give the lure some twitches or whatnot. We use wakes and pushes very often to catch our fish, whether they're singles, doubles, schools, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, here's a video of a school of redfish. I've used I've used this in a prior video when we were actually catching them, but the schools, they're easier to find the wakes and the pushes than the singles and the doubles. Number four is gonna be birds. Now, what I look for in birds are, are a couple of things. The birds on the shoreline that we talked about in the past that's an indication there may be redfish in the area. Now, what I'm showing you here are birds actually working a school of redfish. Whenever the birds are working trout, I've noticed they're, they're quite a bit higher and they're dipping down and dipping down, but they'll get 10, 20 feet off the water. When they're working a school of redfish, they're staying closer to the water. They're usually five, maybe 10 feet off of the water. And you'll see them, they're, they're kind of just paddling in place and then they'll do this little wiggle thing and run down and grab something off the off the water and then come right back up to you know five or ten feet off the water. Uh, I've noticed they do make sounds, but I've also noticed that they're a lot quieter when they're working redfish than when they're working trout. And, but that is a 100% telltale sign that there is a group of redfish under those birds when you see them sitting low and then doing that little waggle and dumping down and grabbing something and coming right back up. Now this is most of the time going to be seagulls and not the smaller white uh, lyre birds. The lyre birds, they kind of, they do that little, that little trick a lot more often than seagulls do. Lyre birds will often be over redfish, but it's not 100% like these seagulls are. Number five is going to be tails out of the water, backs out of the water. If you can see that redfish, then you know he's there. So the the tails and the backs if you're close to them super easy to see and not a problem you know here's some video of, of tails and backs you know up close easy to see the way that we typically find them when they're further away we don't see the color on the fish as much as we see the shine of them you'll see a little a little flicker on the water and once i see that i keep my eye on it and if that flicker goes away and then comes back up I am keyed in on it 1000% because what you're seeing is the shine from a wet tail or a wet back. It goes down, it comes back up, then you know that it wasn't a stick, it wasn't something, you know, odd sticking out of the water. That's a fish going down, coming back up. Whenever I see tails, I'm gonna get up to them as quietly as possible. And often when you see tails, that fish has his, his head down and his tail up. So I'm gonna throw and I'm gonna put my lure on the bottom and bounce it on the bottom more so than I'm gonna bring it through the middle of the water column. Because that, that, that fish is looking down, he's picking up shrimp or crabs or whatever it may be. So I'm gonna concentrate a lot more on putting what I want him to bite down low. Well, when, there's, when you're just seeing backs, then that's a redfish cruising. You don't have to worry about as much as getting it low, but you still want it in front of his face. I've noticed a lot of the time that when redfish are cruising, if you bring it above them, 
they don't want to come up to it as much as if you put it right here. So, hey, there's the five ways to for sure know that there's redfish in the area. I hope it was helpful. I hope you like it. I appreciate the, the email asking me, hey, let's do that. Couldn't work out any better. I want to cover what you guys want me to cover. So, hey, get out there, catch some redfish, check out these signs, check out the Rubber Lips Tournament, and we will catch you on the next one.